Hi there everybody, this is Mary Kirby with the Runway Girl Network and I'm here in New York City for SatCon 2013. It's where all the major satellite companies and their hardware providers converge on New York for a conference. Now I'm here because satellite companies are playing an important role in the passenger experience and some of them are doing some really interesting things. Okay, so obviously there has been a tremendous amount of excitement around this antenna and the development of it. Can you tell us where are you guys at in the program right now? Happy to, and thanks for the opportunity to tell the kind of story. It's a fast-changing story with lots of progress and milestones met. Earlier this spring, we closed our first satellite link on the receive side. We're in December going to do the same on the transmit side, giving us a full duplex capability. As we move forward into 2014, we'll actually be building uh, test modules that we can bring out and, and demonstrate uh, in the field. We have a couple of existing contracts, one for uh, an aero module with Inmarsat, and that uh, contract is moving along just on track and, and uh, very excited about the ecosystem of partners coming together to build a fast beam tracking capability for aero. The success in the aero uh, contract is leading to many new opportunities in maritime and other mobile environments. Uh, similarly, uh, next year we'll be demonstrating with O3B our fixed capability, which puts us into a, a VSAT world with lots of new, uh, exciting economic uh, power weight size advantages for, uh, for fixed uh, terminals. Uh, the timeline for Aero, are you still on track for about 2015 then? Yeah, we're actually a little bit ahead of uh, the plan, okay. uh, and we're finding a bigger opportunity. We're quite impressed with the ecosystem that's come together, the Inmarsat partner group, uh, including Honeywell and Talis and, and many others. Uh, the, the discussion now is not just about the feasibility of the technology, it's what will the technology enable in terms of applications for both the, uh, the carriers, how does it change the way airframes think about retrofitting existing uh, planes flying around the world. We'll probably lead uh, our focus with uh, a focus on business jets. We think they'll probably be the early adopters for our so technology. So that's going to still be your, your early adopters right there. What about government opportunities? Yeah, there are significant government opportunities. Okay. The value proposition that we have uh, is no different in the government, maybe a little bit more exciting. And so. Uh, although we've not uh, chosen to accept any government funding, uh, rather we've funded all of our efforts commercially and through uh, NRE partnerships, we're actually in discussions right now uh, about several government opportunities, both uh, in space, uh, in air, land, mobile, and, uh, and on the ground. So, significant opportunities. You recently announced a pretty powerhouse group of uh, members of the board. Can you talk a little bit about the selection process for that and, and what these guys are bringing to the table? <laughs> Well, thank you. Uh, we do have pretty unique sponsorship, and it's uh, it's highly appropriate for the opportunity that we have. Uh, our our ownership and equity sponsors are led by uh, Bill Gates III, who actually is a member of our board of directors. And yeah. that doesn't happen very often, as you can imagine. Uh, John Malone has representatives uh, from Liberty Global on our board, and a uh, truly sensational uh, venture capital firm in New York called Lux Capital. Uh, lead our lead investors. And then we've recently announced an advisory board, and that advisory board includes uh, Alan McCarter, uh, chair of Airbus for North America. Sure. Uh, we have the president of Euro Consult, uh, Susan Irwin, a terrific aviation executive, uh, three time CEO Neil Mackay, who makes sure that we do everything right, uh, and, and he's very good at that. Um, Tuvia Barak, who spent uh, 30 years building some of the leading defense electronics companies in Israel and the United States, and Dr. David Smith. And Dr. David Smith is generally regarded as the world's uh, foremost um, authority on metamaterials and runs the Duke University Metamaterials Lab. So it's a core team that brings technology, industry, regulatory, and really the, the experience of growing a business, a high-tech business. And so we're very honored to have them and we're highly engaged with them. And so if you were to, to, to try and estimate when we might, might, might see uh, this antenna in the commercial airline market, well, when would you estimate? Well, it's a, you know, it's a, there's a regulatory process that we'll mm -hmm. be going through. We're a piece of the puzzle and not the entire solution. Sure. I want to make that clear. We're, we're not in a, in, in a contract to build an end terminal today. We're, we're, we are, however, innovating with our partners on different ways to think about the mounting, the uh, packaging, in a very, very thin. Today, our concepts for aero terminals, uh, including the radome, are about 2.8 inches off the fuselage. <clears throat> and that low profile antenna, <clears throat> that can be quite large <clears throat> and give great uh, 
capacity to the airplane is something that really is going to change aviation quite significantly. So uh, to answer your question, we'll be finishing that first phase of the contract up at the end of 2014, and then we'll move, we'll actually be doing field trials and flying our antennas on airplanes in 2014, and then moving into the commercial production phase with our uh, uh, airline systems integrators. So it'll be 2015, 2016, when we'll actually see antennas being flown on airplanes. And will it be a single panel, or will you be looking at a dual panel in order to, you know, when those aircraft bank, you need to be able to hit that, those angles. Yeah. What do you think? <clears throat> well, many of the uh, concepts that we've done uh, provide uh, near 100% coverage <clears throat> by locating panels off the center, uh, st strategically located off center and on the tail mount. So okay. giving that sort of mix of view shed gives us, uh, as an aircraft pitches and rolls and yaws and moves, gives us great coverability. Another important point to mention, which is quite unique about the uh, combat antenna, the aviation engineers will draw attention to the bow tie effect of flying an airplane uh, across the equator and not being able to, to capture right. any, any uh, connectivity and bandwidth. And thereby, in most cases, the airlines don't even turn on the, uh, the connectivity because the experience is so bad. With our antenna, that all goes away. So you have complete coverage all the time, wherever you are, and uh, that does also change the game. Honeywell is, of course, paying very, very close attention to what you guys are doing. That's good. Um, yeah. <laughs> but so are other uh, companies, competitors, actually, in the That's field. That's also good. Uh, that are a little bit unhappy about the fact that you've got such an exclusive agreement with Imarset that you... Uh, you're kind of uh, keeping a lot of the information proprietary because this is th this deal that you have at Immersat for a couple years, right? Well, what I would say is this is all about focus. It's yeah. all about getting it right, and we needed to bring the disciplines together of a core technology antenna company with a world-class system integrator, and Honeywell certainly is that. But the Inmarsat ecosystem goes far beyond that. Yeah. If you look at who builds their satellites, if you look at who integrates the Honeywell system into an aircraft-wide integrated system, Talus, these are world-class players that know what they're doing and they're very committed to developing the kind of technology that integrates these systems and really delivers for all the customers, for the OEMs, for the carriers, for the antenna companies, and for the service providers who ultimately are going to bring the applications and drive the user experience. So okay. there's three segments in that airplane. Our antenna can be a small part of delivering new opportunities to each of those three segments. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.